good evening everyone hope you are fine uh, welcome to a new session uh, we just concluded our uh, module for holocaust uh, previous week and now we will be starting uh, a very interesting module that will be covering the great war the first world war and uh, it will be a lengthy one we have to cover a lot of things but uh, we start with a very interesting theme and that is uh, the Fisher thesis and uh, why I say it is important this was uh, the case with the Holocaust uh, the module uh, when you are uh, referring to the Cambridge course it uh, I believe to the disappointment of the student it goes more towards uh, the genesis uh, the genesis of all the events remain the key not the event itself uh, in the case of Holocaust widely it is remembered as the way the gas chambers uh, was used to eliminate uh, six million lives uh, whenever you pass a documentary you will see those barbaric images of the concentration camp However, the course to the greatest extent revolve around the forces, uh, the thought process which led Nazis to undertake such a gruesome thing which has no traces in history. So, based on that, uh, we undertake this course uh, with the same vision and that is to start with a theory, a thesis which primarily traces back the origins of the world war 1914 till 1919 and uh, there are a lot of things which relate to the origin what caused it uh, if you are just seeking an answer it will be very simple the Archduke Franz Ferdinand on his visit to the Balkans he was assassinated along with his wife by a group of separatist nationalist in Serbia called uh, the black hand that's it it's okay if you want to say what triggered the war but the war didn't start in 1914 that's what this topic will tell you and uh, most of the research will tell you some will trace it back to the 18th century some will trace it back to uh, the revolutionary movement that were going on some would translate it into the renaissance itself where the thought process started and Lord Fingers will uh, will point out the, the, uh, to the reunification of Germany uh, from Prussia to German Empire which upset the entire balance of power in Europe and that is what led to the war so the special thesis is, is, uh, is something pretty amazing as we will walk around it and try to analyze it in this session so let's So uh, we start with uh, Professor Fritz Fischer himself, uh, as you can see on your screen, uh, admired as one of the greatest historians of his times when it comes to the history of the World War, no doubt about it. His work is a benchmark. So his life is pretty interesting uh, as we go through it. He was born in 1908 and uh, he studied in the University of Berlin where his major was history and uh, later on uh, from 30, 1939 till 42 he was a member of the Third Reich, the Nazis while in 1942 he retired himself and went to the role of a professor at uh, University of uh, Hamburg for history and uh, later on as the world war raged on by 1945 he was part of the german army he was captured and released as a pow uh, in 1947 and from then he rejoined his obsession for academics research till 1978 when he retired from the university of hamburg and this is where his greatest book that we will discuss came into being which for which he is remembered till day 
and uh, that's for a brief review of his history school of thought that's really important now there are some overlapping factors that we have to take into view uh, germany if you want to study europe i think all the powers are important but they are self centric i'll say but the power which really impacted the entire continent in 19th and 20th century nobody can outpace germany so i'm referring to the school of thoughts uh, where i would like to place uh, professor fritz fischer and uh, to my understanding uh, his work emerged in 1960s now that was a very tricky era uh, right after world war uh, second world war something amazing happened and that was the rebuilding of germany uh, we call it as a master plan we will study once because of the second world war and uh, from enemy number 1 to the humanity as they uh, that something which was unimaginable uh, uh, led by adolf hitler the entire focus of the west led by america became to rebuild germany that was western germany and uh, of course the reason was the world being locked into the conflict of capitalism versus communism so the eastern side which uh, was referred to as the iron curtain by west churchill so uh, in this context the entire urge was to portray an image of integration reconciliation forget about history and putting a lot of things on the carpet and i think that was a wise thing as well however out of nowhere in 1961 this gentleman came up to unearth some things which were long forgotten and that's what makes him so prominent in the german history and uh, the core of the argument was that uh, it wasn't something which was done in isolation or something that happened the rise of the nazi party uh, the the start of the second world war and all that atrocities everything so uh, most of the germany it was of the view now i'm referring to the west germany that the second world war is something germany can be blamed but the first first world war was not the case it was rather forced on them uh, by the powers encircling them uh, that will be the russian empire the french empire and the british empire and these conditions led to the war he totally went against it and in his work he was pretty clear that actually it was a policy and uh, a deliberate policy which led to german being the perpetrator or the major cause of first world war in the continent and that's why it's called the greatest war of all times because nothing was spared as we will progress in the module we will come across these events from 1914 till 1919 acclamation uh, the encyclopedia of uh, history uh, names him as as the greatest german historian of the 20th century and and just to recall uh, that century was primarily dominated by the two world wars uh, later on the cold war came it became a centerpiece uh, but over and above the two world wars which shaped the foreign policy which shaped the entire map of the world they remain the center stage and for that being termed as the greatest historian is something which signifies his place in history and that's why fisher thesis is so relevant when it comes to understanding the origin of the war so we move to the main contents that is his book german names in the first world war uh, here it is and uh, we start with the central debate now this is where uh, the entire core of the argument remains 
as I had already mentioned uh, just revealing the entire contents of the slide for you so uh, primarily the debate was uh, intentions versus enforcement let's put it this way so the debate in this uh, regard which uh, became the pioneer of uh, professor fisher was that all things point to a sustained a sustained policy of imperial germany in first world war that uh, created a space where the assassination of the archduke was just the catalyst for a long drawn plan to conquer europe now conquering europe is like conquering the world at that time because the european powers had their colonies in africa and middle east and there was no denial to it whoever controlled europe would definitely control the extensive uh, stretches of colonies and the continents just like a domino effect so uh, it was a long ambition of the german empire that they wanted to outpace the powers established power that were the british that were the russians and that were the french however he primarily figures out that the uh, that the focus of the policy was towards uh, uh, the dual entente that was between the french and the russian the alliance that was something that german uh, policy was to rattle uh, and to break and ultimately conquer through this war which was which was perceived uh, for uh, from the start of uh, the 20th century the atmosphere was there so preparations were there a lot of alliances a lot of complexities but germany was no defensive it was already middle europe now that is where the justification comes from and uh, in it primarily refers to the central europe by controlling uh, the central europe it will be the key to all the continents and the germans they believe that they have the right it is vested in the way they came into being in 1871 the way they defeated the french uh, and uh, the rise was unprecedented however he contends that actually uh, it was instead of a, a peaceful progression the the entire orientation was confrontationist that that, that was their main theme and this is what they were working for and as it rolled out it was simple that the balance of power uh, the unwritten law in europe it was broken and this thing is centric to the entire episode of war now <laughs> chancellor theobald uh, is a very important figure in the german history or the history of the world as well Uh, at the start of the war he was chancellor of uh, germany and uh, fisher is too skeptic of him and he is referred to as the first hitler of germany as for his work and why because what he did was in 1950s he totally devoted himself to the imperial archives and that forms the basis of his entire research and that was that's what makes his work very reliable and acclaimed because it comes through a source which is established the entire mechanism entire thought process the entire orientation of the imperial imperial uh, machinery that was in front of him and that made him analyze and he was the first one to publish uh, these things one of the event was uh, one of the key outcome was the september plan now september plan 
if you see in the context of the war when the war started in uh, before that but the september plan is where it is clearly drafted uh, that uh, the germany will go towards the conquest of belgium russia and france now if you interpret it in this manner uh, the case of british is very uh, significant here as per uh, fisher germany was not inclined towards engaging britain into the war or dragging it into the war however as per this plan if it does they will take care of that that means that they were ready for it they never wanted it but they were ready for it and by uh, the conquest of the three other powers that will establish them as as in parallel to their vision of middle europe and then middle or africa and uh, to a larger extent of middle east because they will be controlling everything so uh, that is, is very important now uh if you take this thing into account what becomes interesting is that uh, september plan outlines that germany by no means uh, was looking towards a swift end to the war so there were aims that were already set which was the conquest uh, overpowering its uh, neighbors uh, the imperial powers of france Russia and uh, Britain itself and this domination was the key to the entire episode and for that reason uh, it is as per his work the origins of the first world war can be traced to the aspirations of germany and hence the blame lies on them as well and another debate that it opened was towards the second world war now uh, second world war is something which is seen as an individual act a person totally in his own evil world known as adolf hitler evolves a generation through uh, hate which goes on to do this thing however if you look into this explanation and the proofs he came out which was all authentic through the imperial archives uh, then it becomes a policy a sustained policy which led to the first world war and it didn't diminish it didn't vanish into the pages of history or the lessons from the first world war rather it's uh, non fulfillment was at the center of or the the revenge from the humiliation of the first world war in the form of injustice that was seen in the treaty of versailles which was later translated into the rise of the nazism and the second world war so this is the core argument of his first work that is notable work first notable work that has uh, german names in the first world war published in 1961 so from there uh, imposed on intentional and uh, that is uh, which we touched earlier that the entire context changes uh, uh, where germany interpreted itself in a position where it was encircled it was a rising power and the already established powers were uh, forming alliances which made it difficult for it to survive and it was it was forced into a position post the events that happened uh, in balkans that it had to uh, it had to join that uh, war and uh, at the end of the day it all ended pretty bad for the entire population of that time so that's the debate let's move to the 
second one of his book which is Wars of Illusion that was published in 1969 so once again the focus of this book is the policies but uh, instead of tracing it back it's more focused toward the 1911 and 1914 period so that means it looks deep into uh, the exact mindset where it all started so uh, something uh, uh, very important as his thesis toward the foreign policy uh, of the germany and to him it is devised or influenced by the domestic pressure which was there now what was that domestic pressure you see left and right that was the time of great upheaval nationalist socialist movement it was rattling the russian empire so uh, the german policy was framed in this manner that uh, overseas aspiration uh, the urge of going great by challenging the neighbors the established powers it was a mean of the imperial power imperial germany to divert the attention of its masses from such revolutionary thoughts instead of democracy social demo, uh, uh, social democracy it was more towards the, the expansionist view which were propagated and the policies were influenced by that factor to suppress the internal internal urge for reforms or the way it was happening all around so how to how to uh, divert uh, the local pressure it was in the form of a glorified vision of uh, that we referred to uh, Europe which was controlled by German sphere of influence and ultimately that will lead to its power share in Africa and Middle East and that was uh, what was uh, making all the events go to him the German elite it was racist it was in pro imperialist and pro capitalist and based on that this greed totally framed the policy which was by by onset it was destined to uh, challenge the neighboring powers and its ultimate result was a confrontation now that remains a debate was it calculated the magnitude of destruction that the world faced in the shape of first world war that remains a debate but the intentions were there the confrontationist policy was there in imperial germany now there is uh, again i would say uh, we will have to revert back to the same debate of integration reconciliation post second world war so one of the justification that came uh, for that thought was a term in germany which a uh, german language which is uh, it's always difficult to pronounce pardon uh, sonderburg which is the special path so that theory is basically to justify the way nazis came into power and totally dominated the german nation during that period uh, roughly it is traced from 1933 till 1945 that it was a mindset influenced by a person who was driven by an ideology where racial superiority was centric and that led to devastation that is unimaginable even from the medieval time that's unimaginable so it was like uh, a, a smoke screen a justification that was given by most of the historians and researchers of that time now if you look at the work of uh, fresher uh, professor totally uh, totally gives an alternate view and that was that it was inherited in 
policies of uh, imperial germany and what he figures is that post reunification uh, the, the, the pace of industrial and economic development was exemplary however politically it never matured it stayed in the same backdrop and uh, that was the problem uh, which led to the entire uh, attitude of germany and its foreign policy which was confrontationist in first world war as the catalyst to first world war and same it continued even after the loss of the first world war in such a limited time just in 20 years europe was again at war this time under hitler and he blames the failure of the weimar republic the interwar period uh, based on this pretext that actually it was the policy that was driving it uh, and excuses like a uh, special path like it was something which was unavoidable that's not the case it was a systematic policy that continued a mindset that continued and for that he debates against it now another interesting terminology that he hits upon is uh levensram and uh, it's if you can simply elaborate it it's uh, a term for settler colonialism now this is a very uh, different debate uh if one tries to interpret uh, the way professor fisher hits this terminology and establishes its link with the way the third reich behaved during the second world war that becomes pretty alarming and a very bold claim now settler colonialism is like uh, where a power totally dissolves the indigenous culture or its existence by totally spearheading its own values its own its own agenda uh, and uh, by this there was uh, before the first world war there was a very very strong urge within uh, different influential circles of the german nation that actually it is the ultimate goal or ultimate security would be that a sphere of german influence is established and uh, it is first established within europe and it will move on to its byparts at that time as there were colonies in africa and other continents so this thing in this regard to the existence of other initially in first world war in the shape of imperial aspiration and if you see in the second world war driven by social darwinism darwin theory that uh, that of racial superiority which uh, the nazis under hitler they used they become not something similar but greatly linked with each other so what happened in the second world war somehow was influenced by the mindset of the first world war uh, he, somehow ethnic cleansing also comes into spotlight here because you are dissolving the existence of the others like if you see in europe the domination of the established power through absolute control would be like dissolving the existence of those around you and the, as per september plan it was the belgium the russian and the french that were uh, that were to be dominated by germany 
and uh, extend it to Britain if it joins the war, although they never they were not inclined toward that. However, this link is something which is very bold in terms of uh, uh, Professor Fisher work and requires a lot of elaboration if you go deep into it that how that chain of event is linked the extreme extreme interpretation of the second world war is vested in the the interpretation or aspiration of this settler colonialism terminology from the first world war under imperial germany all right this brings us to something pretty interesting and as we move into the other topics of the first world war this will be uh, very interesting the map of europe and first uh, at the time of the first world war if you give it to a student of today who has uh, started analyzing things in the 21st century europe it will be quite uh, an interesting uh, analysis will you see and here it is the austro-hungarian empire then you see the ottomans there the russians then we have germany and the middle and france is there and britain british empire and uh, that was how the war or the picture was of the continent at the eve of the break of the first world war we will discuss it in detail once we move into the other modules so uh, every work has its critiques its skeptics and its opponents so fisher work was no different so uh, primarily the west german or at a state level it was very opposed to what he unearthed or propagated because as i said it was the time of reconciliation the west was all out very building germany west germany and uh, for that such work where the genesis of the first world war ends to some extent the second world war were traced to the way the imperial germany behaved or or the way it maneuvered itself uh, that was quite heavy for them i read somewhere in the publishing house which was which published his work was also firebombed such was the anger and uh, it see it shows another thing as well and that is i mean the lot of work comes out but uh, at that time this thing was so popular and so vastly it was uh, researched and read that actually it was a reaction of that sort which was visible now his opponents uh, basically debate that germany was not alone in this war of expansion the site uh, other european powers the british the russian the french they were already into a mindset which was driven by somewhat like darwinism expansion overseas expansion like uh, a very root term like taming those who are not tamed this is referred to the natives of africa and asia and other regions as well so germany only learned from the experience of the other so it was in a position where this was an or already established norm and it continued with that so there was no special thing about this thing linking it to a theory a sustained policy where imperial germany was different although fisher has made enough bases by uh, looking into little europe uh, concept and others that totally somehow uh, it 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 uh, it overpowers this debate but it's still there and uh, secondly the reliance on september plan because september plan 
he uh, professor fisher was the first was first researchers researcher who pub, who brought it to the public light uh, an authentic document from the imperial archives that somehow forms the basis that uh, the way they were planning to uh, extend the war by conquering belgium uh, france and russia in the aftermath of the assassination so that showed there was no serious effort from them to curtail it uh, this is what uh, uh, professor fisher debates about however uh, it's often say that this plan cannot be relied upon because already the war had begun the assassination of uh, archduke from austro-hungarian empire so the plans which are uh, implemented or devised as the war has started it cannot be seen as the basis of the previous decision making so that is a very very interesting uh, debate that goes on between very school of thought so that was uh, the fisher thesis and it's a very interesting read and uh, it forms the basis of a great debate when you're facing the origins of uh, first world war i'll leave you with my note and that is it is a very powering interpretation of the first world war however viewing it exclusively uh, will be very unjustified for out of most of the interpretation it is a very convincing one but uh, by no means it's the only one as we will study in this module there will be very very interesting interpretation so i leave you here for today's session and uh, let's hope for the best as we move we progress and uh, wishing you all a very best wherever you are going from and have a good time